Hi there, it's Nitty with Nitty's Notions, wanting to do a quick little tutorial on my chicken wire rooster wreath that so many folks have asked about. Very, very simple to put together. Uh, video uh, right before this one was the one on how to dye the clothespins that you'll utilize for the wreath, so be sure and check that out. Uh, and we will begin assembling. The items that you see here on the table are the ones that come in the wreath making kit that I have listed on nittiesnotions.com. It comes with a piece of chicken wire, the 12 inch wreath form, a bow, a flower, the stuff to make your sign, clothespins, paint to dye the clothespins, and zip ties so that you can secure the chicken wire to the frame itself. Now that we've assembled all of our supplies, either you've gotten your kit or you've grabbed your own little items from Walmart and Dollar Tree, that's pretty much where these came from, a uh, ribbon here from Michaels, and I'm gonna show you how to attach the clothespins to the 12 inch wire wreath form. Now these have already been colored utilizing the acrylic paint and water, which I demonstrate in another video. Take a peek at that one so you can dye your clothespins. And it's also the same process I used for the sign, just a little bit of paint and water, just enough to color the wood. The way the clothespins are attached is simply one attached over two rings to the bottom and one attached over the second set of rings right above. The last ring here is not utilized. So I continue to alternate colors, and that fits right on there. You can see those are actually clipped onto the wreath. And you continue to do this all the way around. I average between 10 and 13 clothespins a section depending on how close I put them together, but average between 10 and 13 per section. So you use anywhere from 54 to 65 clothespins per wreath. Uh, the clothespins that I utilize come from Dollar Tree and there's 36 in a package. And I usually buy three packs and I have several left over after I complete my wreath. But all the way around, you clip your clothespin on the bottom two rungs, and then you clip on the next set of two rungs just above. And you continue doing this all the way around, and you'll have to adjust and make it pretty as you go, or once you've got them all attached, you might find that you need to move some around um, but once you have them all on the wreath, the clothespins themselves will stay attached without really any, anything else done to them. Um, if you feel better adding a little dab of glue uh, between the wire wreath here and the clothespin, it does help the clothespins to stay in place. However, I don't like to do that until the very end because I always end up having to move some stuff around. Uh, before everything, you know, is set in stone and in place. So it's better to just attach them at this point. And if you choose, go back and add a dab of glue to make sure each of these stays in place. But you continue this alternating process, one up, one down, one up, one down. If you'll notice, they're staggered and at different lengths, and at different levels. And you'll continue to do this all the way around. I use two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 on this section. So we're gonna repeat the process all the way around the ring. So now, once we have all of the clothespins added to the wreath itself, and you can see kind of how I alternated the colors. These are not glued. These are just attached at this point. Uh, because I may have to move some stuff around. You just didn't, never know, and I don't attach anything permanently until I'm to the very end. But now we want to attach 
the chicken wire, which comes on a roll like this. I got this at Michael's. Uh, I don't remember how many feet it is, but I am pretty sure I get about four of these wreaths from one, maybe five, from one of these rolls from Michael's. So you need about a 12 by 12 piece, uh, which I just cut off the roll and kind of bend it so I can work with it. And I'm going to turn this over and essentially zip tie this right to the wreath frame, which I utilize plastic zip ties, which I got these actually from Dollar Tree in a package. And I just secure the chicken wire to the wire wreath frame. And I've never been extremely precise about where I put it as long as the sections that I need covered, you know, or it's showing where I need it to show. So I attach this. There's several places. Any, any part of the wire frame is good. And then once you have it in place, you can trim the wire down or bend it over so you don't have those little poking edges uh, coming through. And I will use four or five zip ties and get my wreath, my wire attached to my wreath this way. Now, once you have the uh, wire actually attached, you'll definitely want to trim down those edges and uh, these little ends because they are extremely... Uh, sharp and they poke quite a little bit and you definitely don't want that uh, poking anybody or poking you when you're delivering or hanging or whatever it is that you're going to do with your finished product. So here is attaching this last piece and I'll probably add a few more zip ties to make this flat. But after I attached, have attached the zip ties, I'll cut the little plastic pieces off, and there's a few more places I'm going to secure this and tack it down so that it's flush on this side. But that's simply how you attach the wire wreath. So I'm going to continue working on trimming this and making this nice and flush on the uh, frame itself, and then we will continue. So once I have the wire attached to the wreath itself, I fold down these little wire ends because they are really pokey. And uh, I'm sure that wouldn't feel too good if somebody happens to get their finger stuck on one of those. So I try to fold these things in and it also just kind of helps the wreath look a little more complete and together on the back side although sometimes those sides are pretty ugly. <laughs> the back sides of mine are anyways. But I just kind of fold it in like that so that, uh, and gloves might be helpful with this because this doesn't feel too hot on your fingers, but that way it gets the, uh, the wire flat to the back and gets rid of all those little pokey edges. And then I just kind of push it down so that the wire goes to the front like that and that's what it looks like once you're all assembled with your chicken wire attached now we're going to start on the sign so the items utilized to make the welcome to my roost sign i actually put together with my cricket not sure how well you can see that on camera but there's actual words cut out into this vinyl that will stick on to this piece of uh, wooden sign that I got for 97 cents at Walmart. This is done with my Cricut. Even the little rooster symbol uh, is there. And I will remove these using clear contact paper and attach them to this wood. And we will finish the sign that way. If you order the kit, this little piece of vinyl in this uh, brick red color comes inside of your kit. 
and you will peel the letters off and attach them to your sign, however you want to do it. Long ways, uh, you know, however you want to turn it, but that is provided to you. Otherwise, um, I just utilized my, uh, my Cricut here uh, for this particular sign. So once you've attached the Cricut vinyl to your sign, you utilize, you see the back of it, that's a little sticker that comes on it when you purchase it. I just leave it like it is. You probably could cover it with vinyl or something else to make it a lot prettier on the back, but that's what it looks like on the back. I added a clothespin to mine, but I use a hot glue gun to add my flower, my bow, to the sign because I didn't want them right on the sign. I wanted them slightly above. So this is how I attached mine to my sign so that you could still see what you needed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these items and add them to the sign and add the clothespin to the back so that uh, you can attach it to the sign itself. I just utilize a little bit of hot glue and one of the clothespins that uh, comes in a package. Doesn't have to be colored or anything like that, but that's what I had on hand, so that's what I used. And that's actually what you clip to the sign itself and you can move it wherever you choose to move it on the wreath. So we'll finish up the sign and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these items to the little popsicle stick. That's basically what I utilize. The flower is already glued together. I glued the leaf right onto the plastic backing of the flower itself. And I'll add this with hot glue to the popsicle stick. Just gonna stick that right on. There we go, and I'll hold that for just a moment. And the bow itself can just be glued on as, as well. And then we'll attach it to the sign. So essentially, once you have glued all of the pieces to the sign, I just utilized a popsicle stick. That's what it would look like on the back. That's hot glue. That's not a fancy bow tied a certain kind of way. I like it to lay just like this. So I glue it the way that I want it to lay. And with the clothespin, you simply attach it to the chicken wire, wherever you wanna put it. Now you can attach it permanently. Uh, you can attach it in the middle. You can attach it to the side. It can just kinda go wherever you want it to go. And it hangs accordingly. Now this one's kinda popped up a little bit because of my chicken wire. I'm gonna have to make this lay down a little bit better. But the sign itself can kinda be wherever you want it to be. Uh, I like it a little bit down to the bottom. And I just stick it right through my chicken wire and attach it. And there is your completed chicken wire rooster wreath with a movable sign that you can put anywhere you choose on your sign. And that's how you make the chicken wire rooster wreath. Hope you enjoyed my tutorial. There'll be more coming soon. Thanks so much. I also wanted to mention that I utilized a gloss clear kind of like spray paint to spray over the wreath itself to give it a little bit of a shine. I did it on the sign as well as the wooden uh, clothespins and that's the final product.